Hi, in this video I will explain to you why there are two different formulas for the standard deviation. Let's get started. We'll start with the question of when to use which of the two formulas. Then we'll get to the more interesting part, why we actually need two different formulas, one that divides by n and one that divides by n minus one. And I will explain everything with a simple example. So let's get started. Imagine you baked 100 muffins for a wedding and you want to know how much the weights of the muffins vary. So you want to know the standard deviation. Now you have two options. You can either weigh all 100 muffins and calculate the standard deviation or you take a sample and use it to estimate the standard deviation of all 100 muffins. In statistical terms, the 100 muffins are your population and the few muffins you pick out are your sample. Now we can already answer the first question, the when. When do we use this formula with 1 divided by n and when that one with 1 divided by n minus 1? And don't worry, we'll come to the why afterwards. If we have the whole population, say we weighed all 100 muffins and we want to calculate the standard deviation, we use the formula with 1 divided by n. But if we only have a sample and with this sample we want to estimate the standard deviation of the entire population, we use the formula with n minus 1. In practice, this formula is the one most often used in statistics. Let's look at a second example, a medical example. We want to understand the variation in blood pressure across the entire population. Of course, we cannot measure the blood pressure of everyone, so we take a sample. If we now want to use this sample to estimate the standard deviation in a population, we use this formula with n minus 1. So whenever you want to estimate the standard deviation of a population using a sample, you use this formula. If you already have all the data and you just want to calculate the standard deviation of that data set, you use this formula. So now we know when to use which formula. And we can go on to the real interesting question, why? Why do we actually need two different formulas? And the short teaser for you, it's all about the mean. So what do we want to measure with the standard deviation? We want to measure how much the data varies around the mean. So we want something like the average distance from the mean. To calculate this, we pick the mean, look at how far each number is away from that mean, we square those distances and we average them and by taking the square root, we turn the variance into standard deviation. So to sum it up, the standard deviation is something like the typical distance from the mean. And as teased, now everything is about the mean. But why? This is the mean of the sample. And the sample mean is picked to sit in the middle of your sample. If I had drawn this perfectly, the values above the mean would add up exactly to the values below the mean. But it seems that I'm not a good drawer. But let's assume that this is the sample mean. If we would move the mean either up or down, the standard deviation is getting bigger in both cases. In other words, Exactly this mean, which is calculated from these six muffins, gives us the smallest value for the standard deviation. Okay, what if we have the true mean of all 100 muffins? Let's say the true mean is there. If we calculate the standard deviation using this true mean, the result will be a bit larger than if we use the sample mean. But why? 
because the sample mean is not just any number, it's the value that minimizes the distances within the sample. So let's say here we have all our 100 muffins and the mean. From this population we take four samples of three muffins each and we calculate each sample mean. If we calculate the standard deviation of these three samples and use the sample mean, in all four cases the results would be smaller as if we used the population mean. In other words, we could say measuring spread around the sample mean tends to shrink the spread. So let's again look at this sample. The sample mean is not just any middle, it's the spot that automatically makes the total squared distance as small as possible. So by centering on the sample mean, we kind of hack the data and make the distances look a bit smaller than they really are for the entire population. And surprise, to compensate that the distances are a bit smaller when we take the sample mean instead of the true mean, we use n minus 1 instead of n. But why exactly n minus 1? When the mean is unknown, we first estimate it from those same six points. That creates a constraint. If we know the first five deviations, the sixth deviation can easily be calculated from the first five. Let's say we only have one muffin and we know the true mean, then we can theoretically calculate the standard deviation. But if we don't know the true mean and we estimate the mean from that one muffin, the sample mean is exactly the muffin's value. So we have zero information about the deviation. In other words, we have zero degrees of freedom and we cannot calculate the standard deviation. If we have two muffins and we calculate the sample mean, the mean is exactly in the middle of the two. Basically, we have only one piece of information about the deviations because once we know the deviation of one muffin, we already know the deviation of the second one. The same idea with three muffins. After we calculate the sample mean, we essentially have only two pieces of information about the deviations. If we know the first and second deviations, we also know the third, so we have just two degrees of freedom. So to sum it up, to calculate the standard deviation, we need data points and a mean. If we just take all the muffins and throw them on a weighing scale, we can calculate the true mean weight. And if we also measure six muffins separately, we have seven measurements in total. The true mean and the six muffins. And from each of the six muffins, we get an independent deviation from the mean. But if we don't measure the true mean, we have one piece of information less and we need to use the sample to calculate the mean. But this means that we don't have six truly independent deviations from the mean, we have lost one degree of freedom. So we use n minus 1. Now we can even be more precise about the when that we discussed at the beginning. Because we know everything is about the mean. If we use a sample and we estimate the mean with that sample, we use this formula with n minus 1. If we use a sample but we know the true mean, we use that formula with 1 divided by n. And of course, if we know the whole population, we also use this formula with 1 divided by n. So, I hope this explanation was clear to you. At least, I gave my best. My next video will be about what the standard error is and what the differences to the standard deviation are. I hope to see you soon. Bye, thanks for watching.